I was honestly a bit surprised to receive a request for a solo R5 guide considering the plethora of guides already out there, but nonetheless, I aim to please. I hope this video provides you with unique suggestions to build your team or maybe improve upon your existing one. In an attempt to preserve uniqueness, I avoided viewing guides from Reddit or other content creators, so if I happen to suggest the same or similar things as anyone else, know that this is simply a coincidence considering we're all playing the same game except for this guy. If you know me at all, I've never been a huge proponent of speed teams, so rather than laying out a guide of exact units with precise builds to follow, I will instead provide a list of units to build with suggestions on how to ruin them and prove that you can mix and match these units in nearly any way while maintaining these requirements I've laid out for myself. So in this guide, the monsters listed must be completely free to play, 100% safe, have sub 1 minute runs on average, and lastly can work with lesser rune quality. Now, with that I don't mean I'll be using hot garbage 5 star runes, but I mean I'm not going into the finer details about speed tuning, effective HP, or damage optimization. I want it to be where you can throw on some reasonable runes from storage onto these monsters while still successfully meeting the requirements of the other guidelines I laid out for myself. With all that said, let's jump into the video. I'll list these monsters categorically starting with damage doers. If you ever go to the monster collection and use the search feature, you might notice that the more filters you click on, the less monsters will appear. It can be a useful tool, especially when theorycrafting teams. So when looking for damage doers, you want to choose ones that provide as much utility to the team as possible. So just as a quick example, here are some things to look for in a solo R5 team. Uh, common leader skills are good, increasing attack is probably the best buff you can look for. For debuffs, we like the decreased defense, we like the glancing, we like decreasing attack, we like the brands. I think those are the four main debuffs to look for. Unrecoverable is also a pretty good one. Um, for other effects, we like healing, we like to do damage based on the amount of harmful effects, and we like attacking together. Um, if you do that search result, it turns out there's no monster that exists that does all of those things. So let's just start taking away some of these. Um, that's good, and we'll do that. And it turns out there is a monster that does brand defense break and attack together and deals damage based on the amount of harmful effects. And he's a free to play unit that pretty much anyone can make. That's Crow. So Crow is one of the best damage doers you can possibly make for your solo R5 team. He brings a ton of utility in addition to just dealing his damage. His base HP isn't great, but his base defense is solid. His base attack is okay. And despite that, all of his damage output is really good. He's very easy to rune. Here is how mine is runed currently on just double energy blade runes from storage. Main thing to look for is a decent amount of crit rate. This is actually higher than you need because more than likely you're going to run a crit rate leader skill. So really it's usually 19, sometimes it's 24 it depends what crit rate leader skill you're running but reaching 100 crit rate is of course optional i just like it because i use it against the dimensional predator boss but at any rate main thing to look for is to get a lot of damage on him with a fair amount of hp and defense so he can survive speed really doesn't matter at all and if you're struggling to get any stat you can try and look for that in your artifact main stats or through your sets like throwing energy or guard. You can also do ally runes, determination, enhance, tolerance, accuracy runes, all those things that help the entire team. As far as artifacts go, anything that gives them more damage, uh, co-op damage is good, additional damage isn't the best, but you know, it's not horrible. Co-op damage here, you can see I have skill three accuracy, which is nice for the brands, so I'm not too reliant on his brand in particular. He also doesn't need to be max skilled, so you don't need to throw devils on him. One exception to a damage doer that provides additional utility is base. Bailiger, simply because his damage output is actually stupid. Generally in Summoner's War, the more hits a skill has, the smaller the damage multiplier will be. For example, Scarlet Skill 2 hits 8 times with a 100% multiplier per hit, whereas Crow's Skill 3 hits 1 time but with a 720% multiplier. Bailiger's Skill 3 has a whopping 400% multiplier for his 3 hits, which to give a little perspective, Ken, who also does 3 hits on his skill 2 and 3, only has a 110% and 285% multiplier respectively. This makes Bailiger a must-have for everyone and worthy of one of your best damage sets. Similarly to Crow and all the damage doers I'll discuss for that matter, is you want him ruined high damage with enough crit rate necessary to get him to 100% with whatever your leader skill of choice happens to be. So if you have no crit rate leader skill, you want him 100% crit rate. If you have a 19, you want 81% crit rate, that kind of thing. 
The only additional requirement for Bailiger as far as runes goes is that you need him to have a will set. Aside from Bailiger, your next highest damage output will come from damage based on the amount of harmful effects on the boss. This means that you need two things. One being monsters that deal damage based on harmful effects, and the other being a plethora of debuffs. One free to play monster in particular is great for this and that is Arjun, because he provides four unique debuffs, two of which I consider necessary, the attack debuff and brand, while also dealing damage proportional to harmful effects. Lastly, he has self healing on a skill 1, and self sustain on your damage doers is great since these guys will often be built more squishy because of the way you ruin them. Continuing down the list of monsters that deal damage based on harmful effects, we have the fire arch archer here, I'll just say right out of the gate, bad, water archer bad, however the wind one, Ardella, not too shabby. She's great in a team that attacks together since her damage based on harmful effects is on her skill 1. Since you want to spam her skill 1 as much as possible, I think triple revenge is a solid build, but this is optional. If you get lucky with your skill ups, you could even leave her skill 2 unmaxed so she uses it less frequently. Overall, she's relatively easy to rune since her passive gives 25% increased crit rate, so you only need to find 60% from your runes, again even less if you're running a crit rate leader skill. Continuing the theme of easy to room, Naomi, the Wind Kitty, has very low rune requirements since you do not need crit rate at all. She also has solid base stats, so I think she's particularly ideal for early game players looking to make their first solo R5 team. Her damage based on harmful effects is also in her passive, so it's always there unless she gets Oblivion. So it's smart to pair her in a team with at least one cleanser. Lastly, she has a brand, which again is one of the main debuffs I consider ideal to have on your teams. Xiao Lin, the Water Kung Fu Girl, is another one you might consider. This is one that I built early game, but the main problem I see with her is her base stats are absolutely horrendous. The utility with her is similar to Arjun. She does provide debuffs in addition to dealing damage based on harmful effects, and she does hit pretty hard if you got good runes on her, but she's just difficult to rune well and can pretty easily die if you don't have, you know, decent rune quality on her. Alright, so just like a, a few honorable mentions, I guess, and talking about some pay to win options. So, uh, Ken would be the first free to play one that I'd mention that's like an honorable mention. His skill 3 is actually good. I mean, it has a brand in addition to dealing damage based on harmful effects. His skill 2 just isn't very good, and I don't like that he's giving himself more turns, taking away turns from other people. If you do use him, skill 1 does have the attack debuff, so revenge is not, uh, not a bad set for him. Probably the best pay to win monster here would be Brandia. Brandia's skill 3 does does damage based on harmful effects and it's by 40% which is unmatched by anyone except for Crow. Crow does 50% but she hits just absurdly hard. What's her multiplier? <laughs> Holy shit. So her damage multiplier is 840%. So that's just stupid. That's like the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Please let us just be the last shot. Yes! 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 It worked! It worked! That's why she's uh one I wish I had. I could have got her from the eight year event, but I got a Shiho instead, and then Shiho I summoned from a scroll. So I summoned a dupe Shiho immediately after picking him from the event, because that's a typical come to us, fuck you to your face. The rest of the monsters on this list I don't think are particularly special for this area. I think the next best one would be Melissa as an honorable mention. She does do, you know, a decent amount of damage and she's a twin, so she does co-op damage, which is really great. However, I find that Talia actually does more damage on the same build in general. That's just my own personal experience with Melissa. So after damage based on harmful effects, we have damage by attacking together as the next most strong mechanic that you can have in your solo R5 team. What makes it particularly strong is the fact that whenever you attack together, you're lowering the cooldown time of your monsters that get teamed up. So Rauk attacks with two other people, so those two people get to decrease their cooldown for their you know skill 2 or skill 3 that are generally the better skills on those monsters. For my Rauk's runes you do not need swift will that just happens to be what I have on them. Really I wouldn't go swift will I would do these ally runes the fight the accuracy tolerance all that stuff that benefits the team is really the better way to do it. I don't even use Rauk too often in uh, pvp so I think the only team I do use is like Gero Raukford every once in a while and I'll move my fastest swift set on the route because it's important to outspeed. But this set is truly mediocre. It just has enough HP to keep him alive. He does not need to be this fast at all. The crit rate's higher than it needs to be. The accuracy is lower than it should be. Attack is much lower than it should be. It's a bad route. You could certainly do better. The next two attack together units that I really like, other than I guess Crow that I mentioned at the start, is Sabrina and Talia. I think they're just the better twins compared to Melissa or any of the other ones. Sabrina is particularly good because she has 
both skills that defense break and she also has the attack break and the heal block so her skills are just perfect she's also giving 20 percent more damage on monsters that have no beneficial effects and this boss has no beneficial effects so you get a little more damage in that case talia is also buffing damage by 50 percent which is just stupid already and then she also has a self cleanse and self attack buff talia doesn't have any debuffs to mention but she does do increased damage as the boss's hp gets lower so if you are going to pay attention to speed try to get her slower because you want her to be hitting whenever the boss has already been hit if that makes sense like she'll do more damage that way all right last on our list of damage doing types is defense ignoring damage and that is katarina as the prime free to play unit the main issue with katarina that i can see is that her base speed is like unreasonably high for no reason and you need to pair her with chloe so just make sure that your chloe is you know fast enough to outspeed the katarina to put up the invincibility i think chloe's just the best option there's other monsters that provide invincibility i don't know if anyone else does aoe invincibility so you're just guaranteed to get katarina invincible so chloe i have double fight determination just runes from storage like normal and katarina i have on a rage will set that is i mean truly mediocre even with my crit rate lead i don't have 100 crit rate but still my solar five team works just fine also like no defense no hp so if she dies whatever i will say i do pair katarina with bailiger in general because if she dies then bailiger gets stacked so you know that's nice all right i think next i'll discuss healing and just like with damage doers i think you should look for people that heal in addition to something else whether it be heal and deal damage heal and provide buffs heal and cleanse anything that it's more than just a pure healer so one of my favorite healers i like to use is one that's on a relatively exclusive list it's one that can decrease defense and recover hp which not a lot of monsters can do we might see quite a bit of monsters here but really a lot of these heal themselves don't heal the team it's this guy here juan the one drunken master drunken masters are just a silly family to begin with and they work really well in uh, r5 they have defense ignoring damage on their skill one they have attack power uh, decreasing effect they have healing and this guy in particular has a defense break so he fits in very perfectly the worst thing about him is just that his base stats suck by caveat of being a nat 3 monster unfortunately so he's i guess a little more difficult to find stats on him that will you know keep him alive in addition to deal damage so let's see mine is currently on fight enhance and blade for artifacts i have some attack increasing effect just things that deal more damage i went with uh, main stat defense it's like give or take his base hp and base defense are both garbage so and i do have monocrit damage build and you know these runes are i want to say like god tier or anything like this one doesn't have any defense percent that's bad like in general you want defense and hp in your slot three this one's okay this one's honestly kind of bad it gives them more damage and this one's really bad but that's what i got on him i also used the light one which similarly does uh defense ignoring damage has healing but he doesn't have the defense break that the wind one does so another one that we saw on that list was hua he which again has a defense break in addition to a glancing hit on the skill one she has healing and two different skills that increase the attack power which is great because the attack buff is probably the most necessary buff on your team she does good chunk of damage on that skill three and uh since it's all being dealt on the boss it's it's really nice so i would look for just ruining her as much attack as you can i have mine on a crit damage build not on purpose it's just i'm out of slot four attack runes so i have slot four crit damage she's not 100 crit damage which would be ideal uh she's relatively low accuracy which isn't great but she works fine so fran i think is one of everyone's go-to budget monsters that everyone can get from events however i do think she has a directly better counterpart and that's bestet so if you haven't owned bestet i would replace fran with bestet bestet doesn't heal but she has so much more debuffs you know she's got the defense break the slow the glance heal block i think the shield is really nice and also it's a three turn attack buff instead of a two turn so fran's skill two is only a single target cleanse which really isn't that special her skill three is only two turn attack break and then her skill one is a good skill one with the attack debuff on skill one but for the most part i think she's just okay especially early game because you have very easy access to her but if you have a stat that's just like a direct replacement that's way better so my konomiya currently isn't ruined i generally use konomiya in pvp more so than r5 to uh you know boost my lucian to one shot a team but at any rate you can throw on whatever runes speed hp defense i not speed just do hp defense defense or defense hp hp or any combination of that you just want her on a 
tanky support build. You don't need a high attack or anything like that. Good resistance would be nice. She's pretty solid with her kit because it's a heal and a cleanse on a very low cooldown, only three turns. So if she's attacking together, she gets it, you know, in two turns. So you have that cleanse very frequently. She's also giving someone an attack buff. The skill one is completely useless though. So another pay to win uh, healer that you might own is Annabelle. She's got a good three turn defense break and uh, speed debuff on her skill three, a very powerful cleanse and heal on skill two, but unfortunately a useless skill one in this particular case. It just, you know, would be a little bit of damage, but the, the sleep will do nothing. As far as runes go, really you just want to pack on as much stats as you can. Speed is an important, most important things are HP, attack, defense, and resistance. I guess some accuracy too for the defense break, and that's, uh, that's about it. You could go full ally runes. Colleen is an old school one. We have double fight will paired with uh, Bayligger. So the goal here is to actually die. So that's why there's no artifacts and very squishy, only plus 71 defense plus 2000 health because you want her to die and then Jansen, the Dark Viking to bring her back and then she'll give the attack buff to Bailiger and then you're all set. So this is a specific build to Colleen. She can work in your solo R5 team just fine. You can do a like pseudo uh, Jansen Bailiger R5 type team, but it would be with Katarina and Chloe and some monster that dies like a Colleen or an Ayunu. I realize I'm getting off topic from the, the healers, but that's uh, why Colleen is ruined the way she's ruined. So one last thing I figured I'd share about healers is you could potentially get away with not running a healer at all, but that would be higher rune requirements. And basically that would mean you'd want to be using vampire runes on your monsters. So I talked about how Arjun earlier has built-in vampire on a skill one, which I really like, especially for early game players that are struggling with solo R5. But yeah, if you have vampire runes on your damage doers, then they have a little bit of self-sustain and self-sustain will help keep your runs a bit safer. All right, so this last group, I'm just gonna group together as uh, attack buffers, cleansers, and leader skills. That's the uh, last three things I think that I need to discuss. So one in particular that I really like is Jamie because he cleanses and does the attack buff in addition to providing some damage. Mine is ruined on absolute garbage. One problem with Jamie is again base stats as a nat 3 monster. He has like no health and no defense. So to get him on the damage build is kind of premium. I have mine just ruined on triple fight with HP main stats from his artifacts so he can hopefully live. And just to help him live you can put him in the back line. Pairing him with someone like Bastet with shields is helpful too but again if you don't own Bastet then that's not a not an option for you. So my favorite cleanser of them all is Lisa because like Rauk her skill 3 in addition to cleansing is also attacking with two other people so you get additional cooldown reduction and more damage this way. It's a 4 turn cooldown too which is relatively low not as low as like Konomiya's 3 turn but it's solid. Her skill 2 is unfortunately useless but her skill 1 does have a glance which is nice on occasion. So another great attack buffer is Hrazevelg who has an attack buff and speed buff on a skill 3 that lasts for 2 turns. It also does a fair amount of damage, gives himself some self-sustain when he goes in that berserk mode, so it's really solid. His skill 2 also has a branding, which as far as I'm concerned, the more brands the better. And then his first skill is just more damage. It doesn't do anything beyond that because you can't dot the boss. All around a pretty good unit. You can see mine is ruined to like absolute garbage. There's no crit rate, but he's still on a crit damage build for some reason. And uh, as far as sets goes, I am on fight, determination, and accuracy. So I guess he does have a decent amount of stats on some of these. That one's not even maxed and those are low rolls. That's a minimum roll grinded and that's probably a minimum roll grinded. The speed don't care about. And like I said, the crit damage is kind of useless without any uh, any crit rate. So very mediocre phrase Velg overall. I'm sure you could do better. So one leader skill you're probably going to need, especially if you're early game, is the crit rate leader skill. And I think the best one is Hua. You could do like a Theo Mars, which has a higher crit rate lead and a defense break. Hua has a uh, slow debuff, which isn't that great, but Hua does do just like a crap ton of damage. So at least there's that. Um, that'd be like the only thing I'd say is kind of a mediocre monster because she's only here for the crit rate leader skill and the damage. But unfortunately, there's just not a lot of great uh, crit rate leader skills. Let's do this. Like Juno's not good. Fire dude's really not good. So there's Theo, I think would be comparable to Hua, just as someone that does damage and has a leader skill. Doesn't provide much aside that. Um, no one owns Serath. Hua Dam is bad. Pang is okay, but I think Hua has uh, more damage than Pang, and extending the debuffs doesn't matter since the boss cleanses himself after the jump. And the rest of these monsters nobody owns. I guess 
this was Hall of Heroes, but he's bad, so he's just strictly the leader skill. So I'd rather have the leader skill and damage. So I think the best two are Hua and Theo, honestly, not this girl. I guess Lupinus has uh, potential to be pretty good too. Seems okay. So at this point, I think I've given you all the information that I can. So the last thing to do is just a proof of concept. So I will show this is the team that I currently run and it's not totally free to play. I have the Bastet, but I figured I'd show it anyway so y'all can see the average time and just quick rundown of all the runes. Double Fight, Blade, Tian Chen, pretty mediocre. Again, everything is just runes from storage for the most part. I think my Lisa actually has some decent fight runes on her. Not max grinded, but I also have good endure runes because I farm dragons for violent, but it drops endure runes. My Bastet is rude well because I use her on defense, but again, I'm going to take her out of this team anyways, and she doesn't even need to be runes like that to do well here. Naomi, like I said previously, is very easy to rune, no crit rate required. Rauk is runed bad, shouldn't be runed like this, but it works fine. Crow, slows can be, doesn't matter. Sabrina and Talia are my two damage doers that I do have on Vampire. Everyone else is runed on just random stuff, but they provide, you know, a little more self-sustain because this team has no healing other than Juan, which isn't a ton of healing, but he gets more damage, which is nice. Arjun's got the self-healing right. Lauren is a nice little defense break and an attack buff leader skill, which is cool. I'll have her on fight runes. Jamie on more fight runes. Totally garbage. Could probably move him to the back, but whatever. Chloe over here to go before the Katarina. Paired with Bailiger. My Ayunu I actually use on offense occasionally in a suicide team with like Samoth and Perna. So he's ruined relatively well, but really you don't want him to be. You want him to die with uh, high accuracy and come back and brand for Bailiger and Katarina to do extra damage. But you can see I have lots of branders on the team like Kreis Velk and then a crit rate leader skill, double fight blade, nothing special. Let's see how it goes. So just like that, we see average clear time well below a minute at 42 seconds and uh, yeah, worked just fine. Let's uh, rearrange and play around with some of the monsters and see if we can get it better or at least comparable. All right, trying something out a little bit different. We have uh, Fran in for Bastet and I move some people around. I no longer have the defense leader skill, instead I have wind attack percent because I think that's my only option over here. And uh, you know, whatever, I think it'll be just fine anyways. I also put in Hua He instead of one of the uh, drunken masters, the light drunken masters out of this team. Also trying out Xiao Lin, Ardella. I'm over here, I'm keeping the Bailiger Katarina. I guess I could take out uh, the Chloe Katarina. Maybe I'll try that for the next team. But anyways, let's see how this one goes.
All right, and just like that, we have another sub one minute time, this time completely free to play. It was a little bit slower on average than the previous one, but still not too shabby. Let's uh, try one more. All right, for this last one, I took out Katarina and Chloe on the right side team. And because of that, I am I know I'm gonna need some more buffs because Chloe was providing two buffs for Bayliger. So I put the Hraze Bell back over here. And then also there's the Fran and also the Hwahi. So there's plenty of buffs for the Bayliger. Over here, I added Melissa, so we're running three twins in this team. The only healer is going to be the Drunken Master, but the twins are ruined on Vampire, so hopefully that works out. And then over here is mostly the same. It's the uh, damage dealt attacking together combination with Ardella using that skill one that does damage based on harmful effects. So we'll see how it goes. Well, and there you have it. We have another completely free to play, relatively easy to ruin, at least in my opinion, sub one minute team. We see we got an average clear time of 45 seconds, the best clear time of 39 seconds. So it is kind of interesting to see that all three teams were you know, around 45 seconds as their average clear time. No failed runs and 30 attempts between the three teams. So I think uh, think this is solid. When it comes to solo R5, just build units that you think are good for it like the ones I mentioned in this video and maybe in the future new ones will come out and mix and match them and you'll find a team that works and once you find a team that works I would just stick with it like to me shaving off another few seconds is just unnecessary you know but that's just my personal opinion I don't try to go for speed teams I just like what's safe what works and I I stick with it and don't mess with the runes after that that's all for this video I hope you all enjoyed it please smash like subscribe all that kind of thing if you want to become a channel member and join my discord you can click the join button down below and uh that's it y'all have a good one bye all right so i figured just in case there's still people out there that say you know my runes are just too op and there's no way that they can make it or whatever excuse they want to make i uh went and just removed runes from some people and you know i'm removing like the slot twos and stuff i removed slot one from here and you know it also takes away like the fight set so there's eight percent less attack on everyone and that kind of thing so anyways we'll uh do it one more time and see how it goes So funny enough, it barely even made a difference on the average time. One thing I did think about while these replays were going on is if you don't have max towers, that could probably be a big dragon force why people might still be having trouble with R5. I know so many people, longtime players that just never max their towers. It's like max your towers. It's such a huge difference if you max your towers. Arena towers is what I'm referring to if you happen to be new. I don't know a lot of new people, but if you happen to be new to the game, your arena towers give you extra stats everywhere you play the game. So max your arena towers. Anyways, uh, 
slightly slower, you know, <laughs> 48 seconds average time instead of 42 or 45 or whatever, but not that big of a difference. Uh, that's all for this video. Again, y'all have a good one.